walking through parks or through areas where suffering and pain is and we don't feel any compassion, I think it's a good sign to go back into prayer and to ask God for compassion. Hey guys! Hi. So it's me again, your girl Laura, and I have my friend Natalie with me today. So do you want to introduce yourself real quick? I'm a friend of Laura. We do know each other from Awakening Europe. We're both in the team and we talk a bit about compassion, about missions, um, about things that are on our hearts and we are super excited about it. So yeah, let's get straight into it. What does compassion look like to you? I think compassion is a deep feeling that we have. If someone's suffering, we suffer with them. If someone's happy, we're happy with them. We just deeply connect with the person in front of us. So before you mentioned that you can see a theme of compassion mm -hmm. in your life mm -hmm. from the Lord. Mm -hmm. And so is there a specific Bible verse or story that really portrays his compassion to you? Yes, there is. So if we look in the Bible and if we look in Exodus 33 and Exodus 34, this is one of my absolute favorite passages in the Bible. Mm -hmm. Moses asking God, show me your glory. So he's asking him, show me your beauty, show me your presence, show me who you really are. And God is answering him and telling him, actually, I can't show you my glory. I can't show you my face because no one can see my face and live. Mm -hmm. But on the next day, you can come up to the mountain Sinai and I will reveal my name to you. I will proclaim my name to you. And on the next morning, Moses comes up and he stands on the mountain. God comes down in a cloud and he proclaims his name to Moses. Yahweh, Yahweh, compassionate and gracious God, abounding in love and faithfulness, quick to forgive, slow to anger, um, forgiving all of the evil and the wickedness, and that's who God is. So if you look into the name of God, when he proclaims his name, we see that compassion isn't just a little attribute of his character, but it's a huge one. Even in the Hebrew scripture, in the Hebrew language, order matters. And having mm -hmm. compassionate and gracious in the beginning means that it's extraordinarily dominant in mm -hmm. his character and in his being. So God isn't just sometimes compassionate, but he, he carries compassion in his whole nature. How would you say compassion really started to burn in your heart? I would say I've always been a healer mm -hmm. and I've always been a helper. Mm -hmm. Like even with my whole family situation and my whole story, I always tried to help. I always felt things. I always wanted to be there for people. And I think compassion starts with being around people and being around need. But there has been a specific moment in my life where compassion for the lost um, grew inside of me and where things just stirred up inside of me. It was through a dream. So after my second mission trip, I was 16 years old. No, it was after my first mission trip. I was 15 years old. I just came back from India and I dreamed that my best friend and I we were in a house and that house was burning. And it was a dark and extraordinary depressive scenario. And all of the people in the house, they were inside and the house was completely shuttered by policemen. And everyone was around the house and everyone was trying to get these people out. And I remember my friend and I we were inside that house. And for me, it was so easy. I was like, I know the way out. I was like, I know how to get out of here. So let's go, come with me. Yeah, I helped a bunch of people coming with me and to follow mm -hmm. me and to go out of the house. And when we, when we came out as a huge group, the police just asked us, how did you come out of this house? Like, where's the door, where's the way? Like, what did you do? And I was like, I know the way, so let's go back in. And then my friend and me, we jumped back into the house trying to get more people out of the house. Um, and then I woke up. But that dream really stirred something up inside of me. It made me understand that there are people who are, they don't know the way how to go out of their burning in dark houses. And mm -hmm. it made me really sad to see that there's a way to peace and there's a way to Jesus, but people don't really know that way. And we as Christians, we do know this way. We do know how to receive peace and eternal life and all of these things. And we do know how to get out of these dark situations and out of our houses. But in general, I would say compassion starts inside of you. And you have to be present. You have to open up your heart for the things around you. And then it grows. When we chatted before, you also mentioned this really cool story that also happened on the mm -hmm. trip in mm -hmm. India. Do you want to share with us that story? When I was 16, I went to India for my second mission trip. 
um, I remember I was in a car with a missionary, um, one of my leaders, and we drove somewhere. And then at the traffic light, we just stopped. Um, it was crazy because at that street, a lot of people in need, mainly from the slum area, they would come um, to our cars and they would knock on the windows and they would ask people for money. And seriously, I will never forget the picture of that woman holding her child on her hand. I think they came from a slum area and she just looked at me like she really, really looked deeply into my eyes. And then I asked the missionary and I asked him, I was like, can I give her something or what do we do? And he said, yeah, it's heartbreaking, but we actually, we don't give them because we don't know what they will do with the money. If you give them, the more people will come and I will send them around the car. You can't leave the place. It's heartbreaking, but we don't give them. We're so sorry, Natalie. The light just turned green and we continued. And I think one week later, I've been in another car with another missionary and we drove by and we crossed the same street and we, we stopped at the same traffic light. And again, people came and knocked on the window and asked for money or food and whatever. I tried not to look at them because it was so heartbreaking. Then I asked this missionary, what would you do? And then he, he turned around and he looked at me and he looked me in the eyes and he said, Natalie, if you feel compassion, then give to them. And that just changed everything inside of me. So I opened the window. I remember giving all of my apples and my lunch package that I had, all the food that we had in the car. And of course, more people came. It's true, like the missionary before, what he said, it's true. People came, more people came because you see, they see it, you give them something. But it was good, it was beautiful. And we just told them in Hindi, Jesus loves you. And then the light went green and we continued. How would you say to keep your heart open, like to stay compassionate? Good and important question. <laughs> I think it's always important to keep our hearts open and keep our hearts soft in front of the Lord mm -hmm. and to stay connected with God. Because as we just talked about it, Compassion is something that is really in his nature. He has so much compassion, more compassion than we could ever feel or ever have. Um, so it's nothing that we produce by our own. But if we stay connected with him and if we keep our heart open in front of him, um, we're able to receive even just a glimpse of the compassion and love that he feels for people. Even if we don't feel like we're having compassion for people, we can always pray and ask God, to stay compassionate or to receive more compassion to feel what he feels. And even if I saw worse suffering or worse levels of pain and evil and madness or whatever, just to know that whatever they feel right now, it matters and it's real. And I really want to listen to that story. So loving people the way God loves, or even just a bit of it because we never can love how he loves, but just mm -hmm. loving people um being with them yeah i think that's it love and connection we as christians here in europe how can we be connected to god's heart for these people when the need isn't so obvious let me answer very simple at the end of the day everyone needs jesus like mm. it doesn't matter how much money we have it doesn't matter where we live how old we are how mature we are it doesn't matter mm. at the end of the day everyone needs jesus also, as I said, just honoring the individual story of the person mm -hmm. in front of us and not comparing suffering with each other, like mm -hmm. their suffering with their suffering. Like there is no measurement mm -hmm. for pain or for, suffer, for suffering. Would you like to let's just like pray a prayer over everyone who's watching? Because we can't mm -hmm. give what we don't have, right? Jesus, we thank you so much that you love us. We look at you as the one as the one who is compassionate and gracious. You suffer with those who are suffering and you're joyful with those who are joyful. And we ask you to let your presence rest on every heart and to open hearts and to make hearts soft again. Please forgive us, forgive us where we close our eyes for our neighbors. And I ask you, Jesus and the Holy Spirit, to help us open up our hearts daily. Jesus, come with your joy. Thank you, you're not pushing us into anything you're joyful and you're compassionate and gracious mm. so we partner with your compassion jesus we love you in jesus name amen amen yeah guys
guys, that's Woo. it from us. I mean, you didn't see me this much today, but you usually see only my face, so I thought I'd switch it up, <laughs> you know? But um, honestly, leave some comments down below for this beautiful woman if you want to see her again, because she has so much more she can share. This was just a little fraction of what she carries and what I've seen in her life. So if you want to hear some more, you could even leave questions down below or whatever. And yeah, I will create more videos like this with some other of my friends. Do you want to say that? Because I hate saying to subscribe for my whole channel. Oh yeah, okay. Do you want That's to say a that? cool, I, I would love to say it. Okay, like, cool. What do you guys say? Like, okay guys, please subscribe. I, I will, no, I, no. no, don't say please, but that's I'll like desperate. <laughs> And don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell button. <laughs> she definitely knows how to hit that bell button. <laughs> that Have bell you ever hit it? No, I never you, did. She yeah, didn't even hit it for my... Natalie, like, we'll have to do that now. You're on my channel. You didn't even hit the no, bell I for mine. Yeah, no, okay. not yet. <laughs> okay, that's it from us. We love you guys. Love you guys. And yeah, please leave comments down below if you have any more questions. And I'll make sure that Natalie sees them and gets back to you. So... Love you guys. Bye. Bye.